You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa paid a visit to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa at his palace in Rafah. His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Premier exchanged Eid Al Fitr greetings, wishing the Kingdom of Bahrain and its loyal people many happy returns on this blessed occasion. His Majesty the King lauded His Royal Highness the Premier's role in serving Bahrain and spearheading of development, hailing his unwavering efforts in all fields in line with the royal directives, which give full priority to citizens' interests, food, and medical security. He prayed to Allah the Almighty to protect the kingdom and its people from any harm. His Royal Highness the Premier expressed deepest thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King and hailed his kind visit during these blessed Ramadan days, praying to Allah the Almighty to protect His Majesty the King and bless him with good health, happiness and well-being. He noted that Bahrain, led by His Majesty the King, is on track to achieve citizens' aspirations to attain further progress and prosperity, stressing the kingdom's ability to overcome the current situation facing the world and protecting national gains. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa directed His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, national security advisor, and the chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to name all the three sports halls at the Isa Sports City after late Sheikh Isa bin Rashid Al Khalifa in honor and appreciation of his noble dedication to the service of Bahrain. His Majesty the King praised the outstanding roles played by the late Sheikh in the military, technical, sports, and humanitarian fields. His Majesty the King noted that the commemoration of the memory of Sheikh Isa bin Rashid is an appreciation for his exceptional character which has acquired the love and respect of all people in the kingdom and his contributions to building sports institutions in addition to the great achievements of Bahraini sports over the past years. His Majesty the King also recalled the great imprints of Sheikh Isa bin Rashid to serving regional and international sports institutions through the various positions that he held in those sports organizations. His Majesty the King prayed to Allah the Almighty for Sheikh Isa bin Rashid to rest in peace. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a phone call with the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. They exchanged greetings, marking the advent of Eid Al Fitr, praying to Allah the Almighty to bless the two kingdoms, their people, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations, with further progress and prosperity. During the call, the distinguished historical brotherly relations between the two countries were also reviewed. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held phone calls today with the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. They exchanged greetings marking the advent of Eid Al Fitr, praying to Allah the Almighty to bless the Kingdom of Bahrain, the people of these countries, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations with further progress and prosperity. Also, telephone calls were made between His Majesty the King and the President of the Arab Republic of Egypt, President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi, and His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. His Majesty also held a phone call with the Iraqi President. Barham Saleh on the occasion. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa held a telephone call with the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, in which they exchanged greetings marking the advent of Eid Al Fitr, praying to Allah the Almighty to bless the Arab and Islamic nations with further progress and prosperity. A telephone call was also held between His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and the Crown Prince of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, during which their Highnesses exchanged congratulations on the occasion of Eid Al Fitr. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also exchanged greetings with the Prime Minister of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah. Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired a meeting of the government's executive committee held remotely. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted that under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the kingdom continues to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus COVID-19, noting that the health and safety of the community remains the kingdom's top priority. His Royal Highness extended his gratitude to Team Bahrain's frontline workers and professionals who have persistently and selflessly devoted their efforts to safeguard in the health of all. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince went on to emphasize the Kingdom's efficient management of the challenges presented by the global spread of COVID-19, adding that the health guidelines, measures and public awareness campaigns are critical to the success of mitigation efforts. On this note, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince underscored the importance of continuing to follow health guidelines to support national efforts aimed at combating and eradicating the virus. Following consideration of a report submitted by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19, headed by the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah al-Khalifa. Various decisions were taken to ensure the safety and health of all during the Eid al-Fitr holidays. Eid celebrations are to be limited to small family gatherings only for those residing in the same household. Social distancing guidelines must continue to be adhered to by avoiding Eid visits. Eid greetings should be done virtually. Ideas should be transferred electronically using bank and money transfer applications. Additionally, the following decisions were made. Commercial and industrial businesses can resume usual operations provided that the following conditions are met. All employees and customers are required to wear face masks inside the premises. In order to reduce the number of individuals using facilities at any one time, businesses must limit overcrowding and ensure social distancing guidelines are followed. Stores and facilities are to be regularly and thoroughly disinfected in accordance with guidelines established by the Ministry of Health. Businesses must place appropriately spaced floor markings for queuing at the entrance of the stores to maintain social distancing guidelines issued by the Ministry of Health. All non-essential medical services are to resume operations while ensuring health and social distancing guidelines are thoroughly followed. Professional sports players will be allowed to resume their sports exercises in outdoor spaces and swimming pools as long as health and social distancing guidelines are followed. Outdoor cinemas are allowed to operate so long as health and social distancing guidelines are followed. Indoor cinemas will remain closed. As of Wednesday, the 27th of May of 2020, all salons and hair barbers are to re reopen while ensuring health and social distancing guidelines are followed. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Supreme Council for Youth and Sports Chairman, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, commended the royal directives of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa to pay homage to the late Sheikh Isa bin Rashid Al Khalifa in recognition of his years-long dedication in serving the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty the King had directed His Highness Sheikh Nasser to rename three sport arenas located at the Isa Sports City after the sports icon. His Highness Sheikh Nasser commended the royal directives, expressing pride in His Majesty the King's care. And and support to sports and youth sectors, which earned Bahrain landmark achievements and placed the kingdom on regional, contentional and international maps. He lauded the royal keenness of commemorating the memory of iconic personalities who served sports and youth in Bahrain with great devotion and laid the first foundations from national sports achievements. He paid homage to late Sheikh Isa bin Rashid Al Khalifa, who spared no efforts to develop sports in the Kingdom of Bahrain and contributed to laying the pioneering foundations. His Highness saluted the memory of the man who served the youth and sports in Bahrain, the Arabian Gulf, the Arabian region, Asia and the world, describing His Majesty the King's directives as a royal recognition of his lifelong and prolific contributions which will remain engraved in the historical annals. The Chairman of the Supreme Council for Health and the Head of the National Task Force to Combat Coronavirus, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated yesterday a new inclusive care unit in Ali. The opening was attended by the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Walid Al Mana, in addition to a number of officials. The new unit, which is allocated to treat existing cases of coronavirus COVID-19 that do not suffer from symptoms, is one of the largest medical facilities for isolation and treatment, with 814 beds and is managed by the Ministry of Health. The Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah lauded the royal directives and the ongoing support of His Majesty the King and expressed thanks to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for their keen follow up to all efforts exerted by Team Bahrain to enhance the health and safety of all. During his inspection tour, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah noted that the opening of this unit comes in the context of implementing the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to raise the capacity for isolation and treatment centers. He stressed that the National Task Force is working accordingly to a carefully planned strategy to contain the outbreak, which is being carried out with efficiency and flexibility. He also asserted that Bahrain will continue its keen efforts at all levels by providing all the capabilities, qualified human resources and medical facilities necessary to achieve the desired goal to eliminate 
eliminate the virus and successfully overcome it. Actually, we are committed that we accommodate all the positive cases in Bahrain in a separated area and, you know, separated from the, whole, from the society. And that's, I think, what we are doing here. Actually, even the patients who are actually symptomless, we don't leave them at home or we don't leave them in the community. We bring them to this isolation area. And uh, usually they don't take much more than 10 days in the, uh, this area. And uh, uh, after that, they go back with immunity. I think uh, they are maybe more, more lucky than those who are not having this uh, disease and anyhow they have and I think that's one of the part of the uh, uh, that you know accommodation for Bahrain which will take around 814 uh, beds and uh, that's going to be the, the, the biggest accommodation for the uh, cases who are simple and uh, non symptomatic uh, or asymptomatic. The Undersecretary of the Ministry of Health, member of the national team to combat coronavirus COVID-19, Dr. Walid al mana confirmed that continuation of the national efforts to mitigate the pandemic in a manner that contributes to preserving the health and safety of all citizens and residents, noting the importance of continuing commitment to implement the instructions issued by the relevant authorities. This came during a press conference held by the national team to combat coronavirus COVID-19 this afternoon at the Crown Prince Center for Medical Research and Training at the Military Hospital to discuss the latest developments concerning the virus. Almana stated that the Ministry of Health is keen to expand the scope and number of daily checks for early access to existing cases and thus quickly isolate and treat them. He added that more than 262,000 laboratory tests have been carried out to date, highlighting that community awareness is important, urging the need to call 444 immediately after any symptoms of the virus are felt. For her part, the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Tourism, Imani Dosari, confirmed the continuity of work on intensifying all precautionary and preventative measures to combat the virus, noting the necessity of continuing to open markets, establishments and commercial complexes by applying the instructions issued to limit the spread of the coronavirus, underscoring the importance of social distancing. Infectious disease consultant at the military hospital and member of the national team to combat the coronavirus, Lieutenant Colonel Manaf al Gahtani, stressed the need to adhere to decisions and procedures to overcome the challenges of the coronavirus, especially with the approaching Eid al-Fatr. al Gahtani indicated that to date 3,873 cases have recovered and taken out from the isolation and treatment centers, and the number of laboratory examinations that have been performed has reached more than 262,000 tests, which contribute to early detection, noting that there is no 100% accurate examination to detect coronavirus, and no accurate mechanism has been reached yet globally. al Gahtani said that the Kingdom of Bahrain depends on the PCR test, with additional precautions taken. In some cases, the examination is repeated within 24 hours, especially in the occurrence of symptoms, in order to increase the confirmation of the result of the examination and take the appropriate action. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus COVID-19 cases reached 4,289 with 3,873 recoveries and 135 registered new cases. 78 cases were among migrant workers and 56 infections were due to contacts with existing cases. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap and water on a regular basis along with avoiding shaking hands in close contact. Moreover, covering the nose and mouth when sneezing and avoiding public space Spaces when possible. The moon sighting panel in Bahrain will convene this evening, Friday, Ramadan, the 29th of 1441 Hijri, May 22nd of 2020, at the meeting hall of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs to sight the moon of the month of Shawwal, marking the advent of Eid al-Fatr. The panel urged Muslims across the country to participate in the moon sighting efforts and report their testimonies. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs congratulated in its statement Muslims on fasting Ramadan and worshipping Allah, wishing Bahrain constant security and prosperity under its leadership. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia reported a steady increase of 2,532 new coronavirus cases and 12 new deaths, which brings the total number of cases in the kingdom to 65,077 and the virus-related death toll to 351. The majority of cases were detected in the capital, Riyadh, where 714 new infections were reported, according to the health ministry. Jidda also reported the second-highest number of new cases with 390 infections detected in the last 24 hours. The other cases were found in cities and provinces across the kingdom. Females make up 20 27% and males 73% of the new infections. 
The United Arab Emirates registered four more deaths as a result of the COVID-19 coronavirus, according to health officials who added the country also detected 892 new cases of infections over the past 24 hours. The new infections raised the total to 26,898 so far. Health officials also confirmed that 946 patients have recovered, raising the total number of recoveries to 12,755 since the outbreak first began. The UAE's Ministry of Health and Prevention said the country has conducted over 43,000 COVID-19 tests so far. Health officials have launched a nationwide campaign to encourage citizens and residents to download and begin using the country's official COVID-19 testing and contact tracing app, al Hassan. Oman has recorded 424 new coronavirus cases, bringing the total number in the Sultanate to 6,794, according to a statement from the Ministry of Health. Earlier in the day, the ministry announced one new death, bringing the total to 32. The person was a 70-year-old Omani citizen. Yesterday, Oman recorded 327 new coronavirus cases and three new deaths. The ministry said the three deaths were expats who had arrived at health facilities too late, adding that they may have hesitated to reach out to medical authorities out of fear or other reasons. Tunisia will reopen places of worship, restaurants and hotels from June the 4th, according to authorities, more than two months after closing them over the coronavirus pandemic. Officials said that the reopening could be delayed if there is a resurgence of COVID-19 cases. Hotels and restaurants closed since March the 22nd will reopen at 50% capacity and authorities are finalizing sanitary measures for tours and facilities. A final lifting of all movement restriction is scheduled for June the 14th as authorities renewed calls for wearing masks, washing hands and social distancing. Travel between provinces remains forbidden and security checks will be increased this weekend as Eid al-Fitr marks the end of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. Russia has reported a record daily rise of 150 new deaths from the novel coronavirus, bringing the country's official nationwide death toll to 3,249. The country's Coronavirus Crisis Response Center reported 8,894 new coronavirus cases, raising the total number of infections to 326,448. The announcement comes after Russian doctors voiced concerns over the conditions in the country. The outbreak has put enormous pressure on Russia's medical community, while state media hails some of them as heroes, doctors and nurses interviewed by the Associated Press say they are fighting both the virus and a system that fails to support them. A Pakistan International Airlines flight with 95 passengers on board has crashed into the houses in Karachi. According to Pakistan media reports, the plane was also carrying eight crew members. Pakistan Sindh News reported that the plane crashed in the model colony area of Karachi and at least five or six houses were destroyed in the crash. The plane is believed to be a PIA PK-320 Airbus. Civil Aviation Authority sources said the crash happened near to the Jenna International Airport.